Hello everyone, welcome on Just French It and today we have a special kind of video. It's the kind of video that we don't do on the channel and we have Angèle Preto with us and Angèle Preto is a French coach and he's going to talk to us a little bit about his vision of French, of French learning and well we're going to have a little session of questions and answers. So bonjour, Angel. Bonjour Marie, thank Comment you for va? having me on your channel. Écoute, ça va très bien. Je suis très content d'être sur ta chaîne. Après, je ne sais pas si on va continuer à parler français en général. No, oh, we're going to switch back to English. Mm. We, yeah, we tend more to make videos in English so that uh, our uh, learners that are even beginners can understand us. So, yep. But thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. Yeah, well, that's an honor actually to have you here because I've been following your your work for a long time and we haven't made a collab together, even though we know each other since quite a while. Yeah, I think it's been at least two years that we've been mm. just, you know, talking, um, but not really collaborating. Yeah. So can you tell us about how you came into teaching French? What's your story? Oh, wow. Into teaching French. Well, that was a long time ago. It's been almost 16 years that I've been teaching French. I actually started teaching French when I was 19 uh, because wow. I was doing it for free at the time. So when you do things for free, people, of course, want it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So that was a long time before I even have any degree uh, on that. I was in my first year of studying at the university and um, I went to the Centre de Langue, which is a part of the, of the university where I, which is dedicated to languages. And then you can just basically teach other people for free and also learn languages from others uh, for free. And you okay. know, we had foreign students and so that was a great place to exchange languages. So that's how I started and then I liked it and I decided that it would be my main field of study. Cool. And that's and how we eventually got a, a bachelor's originally in English literature, but with an option of French as a foreign language, which probably you've heard of, but maybe your viewers haven't. Uh, no. So in French, in French, that's how it happens. Like you have, uh, you don't have a full bachelor's of becoming a French teacher, but that's more like an option that you have on some bachelors. And then if you want to pursue that, you can do a master's in French teaching, which is what I did. And my option was a bit special. My, my specialization was in French for specific purposes. Uh, which What's is that? It's um, it, we we learn how to develop curricula, cu curricula, a curriculum, mm -hmm. several curricula, for uh, students who want to learn French well for a specific purpose. So the the um, case studies that we have at, at work um, that we have in, in our uh, university are typically things like nurses, mm -hmm. because in France we don't have enough nurses that are formed yeah. so that are trained in France. So we do have a lot of foreign nurses that are coming, and they need to learn French. Uh, or sometimes um, a hotel uh, staff uh, that are abroad but serve French customers, for example, in French mm -hmm. groups like Accor. Uh, so yeah. we learn how to develop typically group curricula for those people that would be for big companies. Um, but what I do now is pretty different because I always make a curriculum for one student every time. So I work one-on-one -on -one and I really, I love doing that. Uh, I just make entirely curriculum for each student based on their goal. Hmm. I've talked about, uh, I've talked a few times about this specific approach, your specific approach actually on my blog, and it's really peculiar in the way you're doing it. it nobody else is doing it like you're doing it. You just I don't think so. No, going think into, into so, so much personalization for people. And that, I think that's great. And I think that's, and how did you develop this idea that you had to do that? Um, well, so obviously, because I learned it in the university, I knew that that was the way that it would work the best. So I knew that from the start. But then when I started teaching online, um, it took me quite a while to become able to find a way to connect what I learned in university with, with online teaching. And mm -hmm. actually, I used a framework that has been developed not at all for languages. Uh, it's a, pre a framework for creating a signature service. It's called a signature service. That's what by Courtney Scholl, if you want to research her. Um, she has this program that's called the A4 Clients, and she explains how you can develop a signature service, which is basically a process that produces a predictable goal. So that how you take your client from where they are to where they want to be. And when I found this process, I was like, oh, wow, I could apply my knowledge of uh, teaching French and knowing how it works and put it into this process. And that would allow me to create something uh, that is reliable and that is also presentable to students because it's very difficult to approach people, especially people who have often tried tons of things because I'm not very visible online. So the people who come to me, they have lots of 
experiences of even failures or just not having the kind of results that they want by the time that they arrive. So by using this process, and I created this thing called the Roadmap to Fluency, mm. which is now the core of both of my programs, because I have a one-on-one -on -one program and a group program, but both are based on the Roadmap to Fluency process. And that allows me to uh, explain it on my channel, explain it to people when they come in touch with me and they uh, connect with me on a call. Uh, I could explain it to you very briefly right now if you want. That's, yeah, uh, that's sure, really sure, sure. fast. So I create basically a plan that's always three pages uh, and I will do it really, really fast. There are videos on my, on my channel that uh, are a lot uh, more expanded about that. But it's three pages and the first one is the routine because probably the people who follow you know that it's very mm -hmm. important to have uh, a good language routine to become a fluent speaker. So that's what you have to do every day, every week and every month. And then you have a page about the resources because I'm all about learning with what you like. And I like also to use authentic, quote unquote, authentic content. That's how, that's what we call it at university. Uh, but that's really mostly YouTube channels, sometimes books and podcasts that are in French, made by French people or French speakers, small French speakers, mm -hmm. but about the topics that you love. So my clients have very diverse, uh, diverse interests. But for example, if yes. you like hiking, you can get YouTube channels about hiking in that. Uh, if you like DIY, you will get uh, channels with tutorials. Uh, and so on and so forth and I have like this massive uh, data bank of French content that I have created over the years because I created the roadmap to France in 2017 and mm. you know, it's been three years and I've just been because I've been researching new channels and new content for every single person that I made a roadmap for um, then I have this massive data bank that yeah, I can imagine. From, with like wow. 30 pages of just links <laughs> So it's really cool. I'm, I'm very happy that I have that. And the most important page is the second page. And actually, it's the same thing that you have on, on this thing. You can have this blank version for free. And it, you have explanations on how you can do it for yourself. Uh, it's a bit we will more... put all the links in the description yes. below for you if you're interested. So this one is free. And that's basically the, the core of the method. Um, but basically, it looks like this. And I, I spend about an hour with my, my first hour with every new client I have. We speak very much in details of, about their goals and what exactly it is that they want to do with French. Because it's a bit unbelievable, but lots of people just go learn French and take no consideration of mm. what it is they want to use the language for. And it yeah, just I've doesn't work that. this way. Yeah. You, you have to look first of where you want to go and, and, and then go there. And that's why it's called the roadmap to fluency because you have fluency, which is basically, that is the description of what fluency looks like for you. So this is a mock-up. I mean, like, like, you know, like it's blank at the beginning, you have to fill yeah. it or I have to fill it. Um, but for example, here, uh, this student would have to communicate with shop assistants and with waiters and with hotel staff and be able to speak about their work or speak in the past to tell stories and all sorts of things. You know, I have students who are uh, lawyers, I have students who are diplomats, mm. so they will have a bit different content. Sometimes they have to run meetings. Um, some people will want to acquire French citizenship. So it could be very diverse. But it's mm. really when you take into account the, the snapshot, like the, the place where they want to go, that's when you can create the roadmap and you can really go there. And then I have exactly. this really little uh, convenient thing. It's, a, it's actually a self-assessment or assessment system. Oh, yes. That's because we have... A1, A2, B1, B2, and you don't understand what that means unless you no. have a master's degree exactly. in language learning. <laughs> and it's really dumb, kind of. I don't want yeah. to insult anyone, but it's, no one gets it. So I if, made... if, Even if you go and check the definitions of it, it's just, it's so broad and it doesn't tell you anything, really. Even if you find yeah. your, your, your level, your specific level, yes, it doesn't I mean, really you, tell you. It doesn't, well, it tells you if you know how to read it. Like for yeah. me, because I have a master's degree to read that, but mm. not everyone can spend five years to go and learn no. how to read that before they learn French. It's ridiculous. And also uh, the levels themselves, like when someone evaluates you, it's not as important as if you can evaluate yourself because fluency is really a feeling. You could know all the French that there is to know. If you don't trust yourself to speak, you're very far from fluent or you might even be exactly. you know, level yeah. zero. So mm. I have this thing and you have it on, on the free version. Um, I have this thing, which is four, or maybe I could use the other one to, to show you. So four columns, and they have uh, one, two, three, four, which is like the level where you're at. And then I have the definition below, and that's how well can you do each thing that you've written on your, on your lines. So the first level is not at all, I have no idea how to do that in French. So if you're a beginner, 
probably all your text will be in the first line, mm. the first column, sorry. Uh, and the second one is I can try, I suck at it, but at least I can get started. So that's when you start. When you see this definition is relatable. Yeah, you, you can understand it, right? It yeah. is relatable. Hmm. So the third one is I can do it, but it's uncomfortable. And the fourth one is I can do it easily, no problem at all. So, and the fourth is fluency. Hmm. And so the goal, and we review the plan every month. I really recommend, even if you do it on your own with just this three thing, review it every month to see where you're at, because you'll see that the ticks will move. And as you see the ticks moving, it's very encouraging. And also, Sometimes because you have practiced a line, you will see that it moves the text for another line as well because you use mm -hmm. the same language. So if it's close enough, you're like, oh, I guess, I mean, I know how to order a drink now. So maybe I know how to get started to order food. Exactly. So that's why yeah. I use this system. It works really well. I'm, I'm very mm. happy about it. Like I said, I created it in, in 2017. I never looked back. No, you're right. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I have two parts to my online activity. I have this French learning part with just French it, but I'm also um, infopreneur. I'm also an infopreneur. So what we call in yeah. French an infopreneur, someone who sells uh, courses about specific things. And I'm also in marketing and in marketing, especially I am in product creation. And this is exactly the type of thing that I'm teaching my students saying, this is the kind of products and the kind of thought that you should put into your products so that it works behind. And it just it blows my mind how you're doing that. It's amazing. Oh, but you said something that was really interesting and that I wanted to get your view on it is that you said, I'm not a teacher, I'm a coach. What, what does it mean for you? What, how does that manifest? Yes, so often a teacher is someone, you come to their class, they teach you, if you learn, it's great. If you don't learn, uh, you try to you know, get better at it. And they have a completely different at, approach um, to teachers. And I would even say that languages can't be taught, they can only be learned. So mm, exactly. a coach is not someone who's teaching you, I do a lot of teaching, obviously, I do a lot of talking to people, but I'm mostly helping people learn. And I once heard someone define a coach as this like very mind-blowing definition that a coach is a vehicle. And it is true. I mean, a coach is also like a bus, right? A bus, a coach, it's a vehicle. Um, but a coach as a person is someone who is here to help you get where you want to be faster. Uh, because obviously, I mean, once you have something like this, it's a lot easier to go there and you go a lot, there a lot faster than if you have um, no idea of where you're going for starters or no one to help you. Because then of course I will know how to get there the sooner, what to study first, what to study mm -hmm. next and how to really put French in your life so that you don't just learn in the classes but really just start speaking it because that's the goal, right? You don't learn French just to go to the class and no, exactly. French to your teacher. Like I, I always tell people like, I'm very glad if you learn how to speak French with me, but that's not your goal. You're wasting your money if you're just doing that. You want to learn, know how to speak French in your life when you need it. And it's mind blowing the number of people that I see who are coming to me, telling me that they have invested so much time and effort and money in classes and they can't speak at all. They're mm. like, no, I don't like, if I ask them, okay, so you've been in class for like two years, tell me something in French. Like, uh, yeah, okay, and this something is, has not worked. Yeah, something this is didn't exactly work. Exactly the same situation. Uh, when 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 I started learning English, I had had ten years of English classes, and I wasn't capable of holding a conversation with someone. It was just not possible. I was there in the middle of Dublin, and I was completely lost. And I thought people were just so strange. But no, it's just that those 10 years were completely useless. It wasn't actually learning. I wasn't capable of speaking English. So I, I like to tell people that it's not really useless because I mean, it's, it sounds bad when people are coming to me on the course yeah. for the first time, like I spent 10 years learning and it was useless. I know nothing. I always tell them that, no, don't worry. It wasn't useless. Everything you learned is actually still there. Somewhere at the back of your mind is that, that it's just that you don't know how to use it but it doesn't mean that you don't know it. And very often when I start working with people that are in those situations, you know, they're like, okay, I trust you and they sign up. Mm. And then what happens is that they make progress really, really fast because they have all this knowledge which they don't really know they have, but it's somewhere. So as we really start working and applying, you know, words and even full sentences sometimes just pop out of nowhere. You know, stuff. I like creating a safe space. That's also an important part of, of my coaching is that yeah. it's important to be in a safe space. Just, you know, be sure you won't be judged. 
because uh, often, you know, what happened when you were at school is that if you were together with other teenagers, we're not so keen on speaking English and possibly messing up in front of them. Yes, exactly. That's a terrible space to learn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't want that. It's like, it's horrible. So, you know, if it's just you and me, or even in my group program, we have the Facebook group, which is closed for the, just the students. No one's going to judge you. We're all in the same boat here. Mm. Uh, I'm just, I'm driving the boat, Kana, but it's still the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so, so I, it's really important to feel that you won't be judged and that you'll be able to speak, and, you know, and if you speak or if you don't speak, you won't be judged either way. And then when they're in that context, they just start popping out like strings of sentences or like, oh, I know this, like this word is in my head for some reason, like, what is it? Is that related? Happens to me almost every single session, especially at the beginning, because mm. afterwards they get used to it. So yes, <laughs> but the... at the beginning, it's impressive. Just it is there. Everything you've learned. If you have learned French for years and you can't speak any French, know that it is there. You just need there someone uh, to be able to help you use it. But it's not yes, lost. exactly. It's, it's useless in, in that sense. It's yes. useless. You can't use it. Yes, but it's you're there. not using it. It's there. Mm. Exactly. Mm, you're right. You're very right about that. Now, um, you mentioned the fact that you, we need to be in a safe space. And I think that your view of language learning is a lot linked with personal development in yes. a way. And you talk about it a lot. So what's your view on that? How how much do you think it's linked? Is it really together or is it, is there a little string in between the two, the it's two concepts? It's completely linked. Mm. It's, um, and I see it every day. Like to give you an example that happened today, I had uh, a call with one of my clients and I found that um, in the learning of French, she wasn't paying attention to details. And that was causing her problems because she was not learning the, uh, the feminine and, and the plural and these kind of things mm -hmm. correctly. And then because she would not know these things, she wouldn't be able to move on to more complex things because they have to build upon them. So I told her, uh, yeah, I, I need you to perhaps do less exercises, but spend more time on them and pay a little bit more attention to detail. And she told me, oh, that's the problem I have everywhere else in my life. Ah, so she, yeah. she was aware of this and, and it is so it is completely an experience of personal development when you are uh, looking at French and your coach tells you okay you want to pay more attention to details and then you learn to pay attention to details and you can also apply that in other areas and that's just an example but even for myself I wouldn't have the business that I have if I hadn't been completely obsessed with personal development and just becoming able to build that business so of course what I have learned for myself I also bring to my uh, to my students. So mm. it's come to a point where I even have meditation tracks in my group program. <laughs> and everybody oh, yeah, that I've, works I've on one also has access to them. So we've, I've gone like, very far. I've created a workshop about uh, manifesting techniques for learning French. And actually mm. those workshops, I just offer a list of, of possible topics that we've spoken about and then my students vote for them. And at some point they had such a dedication on pre-picking the most woo-woo topics. <laughs> you know, I, I, made, I made this manifesting techniques for learning French. I thought it was, you know, over, but the next month they picked energy clearing for, for French learning because I had mentioned in that manifestation workshop that, oh yeah, energy clearing is a good technique that you could use. And maybe we could make a workshop, you know, one day in 10 yeah. years. No, <laughs> next month. <laughs> but, I have okay, no I idea it. what is energy, energy clearing, you say? Energy, energy clearing. clearing. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's very woo-woo, but it's also connected with psychology and uh, mm. um, hypnosis, hypnosis, if you know what uh, you oh, know, hypnotherapy yeah. mm -hmm. and things like that is. Uh, it's the idea is that you have mental blocks and you can release those blocks in a variety of ways. And one way mm. is to go in a meditation and just visualize the blocks being released. That's the easiest way that I could explain it. And so we made a workshop for that because the, the biggest difficulty is to uh, identify those blocks in the first place. Like if you know you have them, then you can work on them and release them little by little. And you know, it's annoying because he sees them coming again and again and again, but at least like, you're working on them. It's not like you have them and you don't know. And so the challenge was to have them identify which um, quote, quote, energy block or mental blocks would be preventing them from learning French. Mm. And we went very far in that because there's also a theory that perhaps you carry blocks from your ancestors. Or yes, I've heard of that. Blocks from your past lives, if you believe in past lives. So, I mean, of course, you sort of carry blocks from your ancestors because they're passed on to you from your parents, like in your education and so on. Mm -hmm. So 
I went really far down that rabbit hole and I was like, okay, what if you could bring blocks from past lives or from ancestors or from your previous life? What are all the things that could have caused those blocks? And as it turns out, if you look at what was a French colony at any point in time, we have messed up with the entire globe. Like, I'm <laughs> That's sorry, like, I apologize to the entire world on behalf Not of- Not as I much as the Brits, but uh, we have a fair share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, if you believe in past lives or if your ancestors have been literally anywhere on the globe, mm. in Africa, in America, somewhere in Europe, you've had to deal with us in an un, you know, unpleasant way. Let's put it, even in Asia, actually, there was a lot of French uh, colonies yeah. in Asia. Mm. So, yeah. So if that is even a thing that you can carry energy blocks from you know, those times when basically your ancestors were at war with the French, you can be sure it was your case. Like some You'll of find your something. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And, definitely. and mm -hmm. it's really interesting because I do those workshops live. So the attendees that are here and then they're recorded. So they're, you can always access those workshops. Mm -hmm. They're available in, in my uh, group program the French Frenchy Accelerator, but I do them live. And then there's an uh, opportunity for the live attendees to contribute. And during that workshop, one of my students who's now in Quebec, but he's Australian, had a memory just pop in his head that when he was 12, uh, and he's, he's a nurse, uh, he's a nurse in, uh, in uh, oncology. So he deals with children mm. who, has, who have cancer and he has been a nurse for most of his adult life. Uh, but I think it's when he was 12, I'm not even sure if that's, but you know, decades ago, that he had not thought of that for decades. But um, close to Australia, the French had um, a tryout of their nuclear warfare. Mm, and that resulted yeah. in some children uh, or people who lived in those areas or were born later to have cancer. And, and this man had created such a you know, hatred for the French for having done that, which is completely understandable. And he had not thought of that for decades, but during that workshop, he was like, oh yeah, this thing happened and I had totally hated the French at this point. And if that would stop me from learning French now, it's not weird, you know? No, you're right. It's still there in your, somewhere there and you need to identify it and unblock it so that you yes. can move forward. Hmm. That's so we, interesting. We, we're going interesting. really far down the rabbit hole sometimes, but it's, it's fascinating and it always helps people and they always feel that they get something out of it. So yeah, I'll keep mm. doing it. Yeah, and you're, and you're right in that sense that, and I always tell uh, my students this is that learning French is not just learning French, it's really learning about how you uh, work, how you work with yourself, how, how you are in your own body, uh, you know, um, in your relation with others, especially mm -hmm. actually, because when you are speaking, you are projecting something about yourself and yes. you, it's in that moment that you can see all your insecurities linked to the, what, what others think of you, especially, and that's mm -hmm. the huge blockage. Uh, yes. To my students, it's especially that they are very, very afraid of appearing ridiculous or, or behaving like children. And that mm -hmm. comes back a lot. I don't know about you, but that comes back a lot. The fact that I don't want to sound like a child. I don't want to sound like yes. a baby. Mm. And this is, this is also something that tells a lot about their personality and the way that they carry themselves into the world. Yeah, th this is absolutely huge. And I do have, uh, I have a video, I think that's my video about instant fluency, like the instant fluency hack um, that, um, that speaks about that because lots of people just don't want to sound like a child because they feel mm. that the French that they know is just not enough to express the thoughts of an adult. Yeah. Not enough words, not enough grammar, just you can't make those long, complex sentences, which we are making right now because we're speaking mm. English, you know, like adults because we're yeah. fluent. But when you're a beginner or an intermediate student, you can't do that. And I always tell people that you can express any kind of complex thought if you break it down into small pieces. Exactly. And I spend a lot of time in my coaching sessions being like, okay, can you break down this thought? Can you make the sentence shorter? Can you make several sentences? Because that will allow you to express yourself. And one tip that I also like to give, if you're really afraid of sounding like a child, uh, it's not to, sound, to speak as a child, but to speak to a child. Mm. So, because if you were speaking to a five-year-old child and then explaining your job or explaining whatever you want to explain to them, you would actually be able to. I'm sure that like, you know, whoever is watching this right now, just think of explaining what you do at work to a five-year-old child. You would perfectly be able to do that. And chances are you would even be able to do it in French. 
depending on yeah. what your level of French is. Mm. And um, it's really important to make this shift as thinking not that you are a child yourself, which is completely debilitating as an adult, uh, than thinking that the other person is the child and you have to break down your thoughts, uh, at which point mm. sometimes people, uh, people will say, but isn't that demeaning if I speak to the others like they're a child? And I answer, it depends when you speak to children, are you being demeaning? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. I mean, you know, if you're not, then you're good. Mm. And uh, this, this is interesting because yesterday I read an article about the, the Feynman technique, which is a technique of teaching that consists of actually explaining what you know to a 12 year old or even to less than that a five year old or two well two year old might be a, a little pushing yeah. it but uh, to even to a five year old so when you can explain what you know to a five year old you know it and mm. and you can use it with anyone after that because you know it so that echoes very nicely what i what i heard yesterday um there was a point that I wanted to talk about with you, and it's, it, does, it does not relate to the conversation that we just had, and it's a little bit more personal than about you. The other day I was in Paris and I was uh, talking uh, with a friend, a friend of mine, and she's Lithuanian, and she was in, in Paris for the day, and she said, you know, I fell in love with France when I actually came to France. Before that, I thought it was overrated that everyone was talking about Paris and France like it was some sort of you know amazing things and about French as well but she said but once I'm there I understand it's really nice and I realized that as a French native for me it was the exact contrary I had to leave France to be able to like it to be able to fit, to fell in love with uh, French and French and the French people was it like that for you or did you always have this love of French and no, it's France Absolutely like that. I mean, I lived in France the first 25 years. I didn't really see an advantage in it. Mm. Um, and then I, had, I left because originally I, I was supposed to leave for one year. And the reason is that when you study French as a foreign language to be a teacher, in this line of work, you are not taken seriously if you don't have experience of working abroad. Mm. Um, so you have to leave France, at least for a short time, if you want to get a job, not even just a good job, but a, any job in France. Mm. You know, with, job with an actual contract that's not one hour here one hour there um, so that's why I left originally and finally I fell in love with uh, the city of Vienna so I keep living in Vienna but whenever I go to France I appreciate it a lot I appreciate the food I appreciate that I can talk to people without uh, you know without the, the pressure or the filter because um, here mm. I mean everybody speaks German so I have to switch my brain to another language whenever I want to speak to someone on the outside um, because my brain is mostly in English. I actually have that yeah. in the UK too. I went to London last year and I was like, what's going on here? Like everybody speaks the same language as my brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I realized this as well. I was in a, in a relationship with a, a British guy for a long time. And we, when we were living in France, it was amazing because we were speaking another language. There was really a clear divide. Mm -hmm. But when we moved to Ireland and everyone was speaking English, I wanted to speak French with him because I wanted this yeah. this barrier to come in between my language. my secret love language and my mm -hmm. normal language with people, and that's that's very interesting. Yeah, it's interesting that you have it even with English. So because in France, many people actually understand English. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I live I live in a small I live in a small village. I'm back at my okay, parents for a few months. Don't get it. So. Um, even though we have English tourists that come and stay because we have a, a guest house here, sometimes English or Australians or Americans sometimes even. Um, my parents, my friends here, my brothers speak a little bit of English, my parents not at all, and everyone who, li who is in this village doesn't really speak English. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's, here it's my language. It's my, it's my secret Your life. secret language. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that exactly. happens to you, but me, when I'm in France, I eavesdrop unwantingly because I'm so used to being in Austria where people will speak a language that for me takes me efforts to understand German. So whenever mm. I'm in the tube, for example, I don't randomly understand what other people say. I have to tune in. Yes. But in France, the, the moment I land at the airport, I'm in that little navette thing, uh, the shuttle from like yes. the terminal to the train station. Yeah, sure you know that. I hear everything they're saying, all the French. And if I'm in the tube in Paris or anywhere, it's, 
and it's overwhelming and it takes me several days exactly. to readjust it's so like, overwhelming. oh, I actually don't, I must tune out of their, mm. of their conversations. It's really interesting. And I think that's, that's our introverted personality who does yes. that as well. We get overwhelmed when people speak the same language as us and, and we need to, 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 yeah, switch it off sometimes. And especially it's... if there are many people having different conversations. Yes. Yeah, it's very tiring. It's very, yeah. very tiring. Well, um, that's all the question I wanted to ask you today. Do you, do you want to say something else? Um, no, I think I said everything. Uh, the conversation was really interested. interesting. Yes. I yes, keep I... teaching the difference between A and A, and now I make the mistake in English. Do you believe that? Yes. <laughs> I, I can, interesting. I can, I can. It was interesting. Interesting, <laughs> exactly. And so, yeah, I want to add that we are having another conversations, which is yes. on my channel. So mm -hmm. you can come over to my channel and, of course, subscribe and check out what I do. I have lots of videos that are mostly about the strategy of uh, of learning French, but not only. Uh, recently, I've also started making videos about um, just taking a celebrity who speaks French and breaking down the mistakes that they make. So it's like a little French class mm. uh, with Timothée Chalamet. That's, that's the first one I made. And there will be several actually with um, Bradley Cooper. Oh, I'm yeah. Right now, because Bradley Cooper <laughs> has been giving interviews in French for 10 years. So we can yeah, actually- so, so we have a lot of content. Yes, Lots exactly. of content to discuss. Mm. So you can come to my channel for that. And also I interview uh, other experts. Uh, I've interviewed um, Alex, for example, from Oh. French in plain sight, if you know him. Uh, and oh yeah, I love Alex. That. He's so, so cool. <laughs> yes. Mm. And now there was an interview with Mary, with Marie from here, from just friendship from here, basically. Uh, <laughs> next, so we'll put mm. it on the screen somewhere. Like there'll be a little uh, video, and then you can. Mm. And I will put all the links to uh, Angel's channel and Roadmap to Fluency and your accelerator as well. All of that you should definitely go and check out because it's really, as you saw, quality content that is really going to help you, you know, move along your French journey and maybe also, you know, uh, unblock your blockages when it comes to uh, French. Okay, well. That's good. Well, I'll, I'll see you on, on Angel's channel if you come and see the other video that we have made together. It will be, no, it's really the same day, isn't it? Yes, yes. it's really the same day. We are releasing them at the same time, so you can just click on it right now and watch it next. Perfect. See you there. See you there.